In this video, we're going to continue our basic talk about uh, metabolism, and we're going to begin with, with talking about enzymes. So metabolism, the conversion of metabolites for the most part, are catalyzed by enzymes. And that's because um, conversion of molecules are way too slow by themselves, so we have enzymes to speed this up. And enzymes are great because they are very specific in the product they make. This means our metabolic processes are really efficient um, because you don't make any byproducts that could be toxic or useless for the cell. Enzymes can also couple endergonic reactions, which means non-spontaneous, with exergonic or energetically favorable or spontaneous reactions. In the metabolism, we're really going to just see four types of reaction. We will see redox reactions, which are carried out by your oxidoreductases. We'll see group transfer reactions, which are done from transferases and hydrolases. We'll see eliminations, isomerizations, and rearrangements, which are carried out by isomerases and mutases. And we're also going to see the making and breaking of carbon double bonds. These can be carried out by hydrolases, lyases, and ligases. And are we going to go forward? There we go. So, also when I'm talking about the basis of metabolism, we have to realize that in a eukaryotic cell, these will take part in different places of the cell. Um, Eukaryotes have the advantage of compartmentalization, so different metabolic pathways operate in different locations. For example, the mitochondria will do your electron transport change and oxidative phosphorylation. Cytosol will do glycolysis and fatty acid biosynthesis. While in prokaryotes, you don't have subcellular locations. Rather, you can localize different processes to different parts of the cytosol type. So they still do have localization. It's just still in the cytosol. And since we are moving between different organelles, transfer proteins are very essential for making metabolism work. Now for multicellular organisms, you have a further level of compartmentalizations in your tissues and organs. And we can also see specialization can happen in enzymes as well once you get to this higher level. So on isozyme, is an enzyme that catalyzes the same reaction but are encoded by different genes. Therefore, they can have different kinetic and regulatory properties. And we'll see throughout metabolism, we'll have isozymes that we can shut off um, with different, um, different regulators. And this will um, greatly allow metabolism to have some flexibility and more control. Again, remember the big picture is metabolism. We're eating, we're getting the energy to do stuff. We have to control this process a lot or it can go haywire like it does in cancer. So we want to make sure we are very good at regulating our enzymes and regulating the flow of energy. Now, we could not talk about uh, metabolism without talking about thermodynamics, which is the study of energy. And when we talk about uh, metabolism, we're usually going to talk about standard free energy change, which is delta G naught prime. So just as a reminder, for a standard reaction of A plus B, which are your rea reactants, going to C plus D, which are your products, the free energy change of that reaction, remember negative means spontaneous, positive means non-spontaneous, zero is equilibrium. The free energy change is the standard free energy change plus RT, gas constant, temperature, and Kelvin, multiplied by the natural log of products divided by reactants. And these are concentrations of products divided by concentration of reactants. Now, if you're at equilibrium, this is zero. And this is what we call KEQ. So delta G not prime equals minus RT ln KEQ. And when we talk about um, energetics and metabolism, I'm usually just going to say delta G not prime or KEQ. We're not going to talk about actual delta G all that much. We'll touch on it here and there, but we're more, mostly going to talk about this um, reaction. Now, inside the cell, many metabolic reactions are near equilibrium reactions. That means 
that inside your cell, all your concentrations are near their equilibrium concentrations. That is, you're near KEQ. That is, most of your enzymes are actually at zero. You can go either forward or reverse. It's very easy to do either or for many of the enzymes in metabolism. However, there are a select few that are very far from equilibrium. That is, their delta G is very negative we call these irreversible and these irreversible enzymes control the entire flow of substrates um, through any metabolic process um, so you can actually stop metabolism if you shut off these irreversible enzymes or you can speed up metabolism if you speed up these enzymes and this idea of speed or flow we call that flux. So flux is how fast your metabolites go through a metabolic process. Um, and to actually talk about or understand flux for uh, any process, you need to know which enzymes are near equilibrium and which ones are far away. And when you start to study metabolism, you'll see that enzymes that are far away from equilibrium are actually placed in certain spots in the metabolic pathways. Um, and this is strategic lead place so we control metabolism. And this placement of these enzymes far from equilibrium has three important implications. One, metabolic pathways are generally irreversible. Um, so if a process is very negative, that process is irreversible. And since on a pathway you have a couple of these processes, overall the whole metabolic process is irreversible then. Therefore, uh, Metabolic pathways have a path. They don't really go backwards. They have a directionality to them. Two, every pathway has a first committed step. So usually early on, we're going to see this all the time, in your metabolic pathway, you're going to have one enzyme that is very irreversible. Delta G is super negative. And once you pass that enzyme, your metabolite can't go back anymore. That metabolite is destined to go through the metabolic metabolic pathway and because we have these irreversible steps if we do need to go backwards and for every metabolic path there's usually a reverse path um, we need a separate reverse path for example let's say we're going from metabolite 1 to metabolite 2 that is we're changing 1 to 2 and that goes through enzyme A well enzyme A is irreversible so we can't go back to directly to 1 Instead, we need to go through two new enzymes, X and Y. So um, the forward path and the reverse path are unique and different now. And that's all because we have enzymes that are irreversible. Now, to control the flow of metabolites through the metabolic process, the cell has three main or four main things it can do. One, allosteric control. Um, so biochemist one, we talk about allosteric. So go and review that if you're not sure what I mean. But it basically means you have an effector that are often substrates, products or coenzymes, and you can affect the speed of an enzyme. For example, um, we have a reaction where uh, A goes to B, B goes to C, and C goes to our ultimate product. Well, this product can have feedback inhibition, which goes back and inhibits this step. That's called uh, feedback inhibition, and that's a form of allosteric control. You can also have covalent modification. So enzymes can be phosphorylated, dephosphorylated, or covalently modified to either speed up or slow down activity. You can change the speed of substrate cycles. So um, like we said on the previous slide, forward and reverse paths are usually done by different enzymes. So here we have AB going to CD, B to C, let's say this is our rate limiting step, so it has two enzymes, so forward and reverse enzyme. Well, we can control the amount of C not only by modifying the forward reaction, not only modifying this reaction, but also modifying that reaction. So if we speed up R or decrease R, we're actually also changing how much C goes to D. So that's what it means to be a substrate cycle. You can either speed up or slow down either the forward or reverse reaction. 
And the last type of control is enzyme concentrations. The less enzyme you have, the slower metabolism will be. And you can do this by altering protein synthesis and protein destruction. Now, one, two, and three are rapidly, or can be done rapidly, while four is much slower. So four is more your long-term solution. If you really want to speed up or slow down metabolism long-term, you're going to modify your enzyme concentrations. If you want to do it quickly in the short term, you can do one, two, or three. And that's it for this video. I will see you in the next one.